Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, uh, so am I. <laughs> I am just learning how to do videos and everything else here on YouTube. So uh, hopefully this isn't too cringy and if it is, hopefully I'll improve. I just wanted to wish everybody a uh, Happy New Year's. The New Year's is coming up in a few days. It's currently the 27th when I'm filming this. And I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas season. If you celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever it is you celebrated, I hope it was great. And if you didn't celebrate anything, I just hope you had a happy Friday then. While I was kind of thinking, what am I going to film? Um, I thought, you know what? New Year's is coming up. Let's do a New Year's video. And I got thinking about various New Year's traditions and I realized that some traditions that I adhere to may not be your traditions and so I wanted to share them with you. My grandmother imparted, my mom's mom, I should clarify, uh, imparted a few New Year's um, traditions into me that I still carry through to this day. Now, Grandma, if you asked her, um, she would say she's Presbyterian. However, um, I believe most of these practices are like occult-ish, like pagan or Wiccan. Um, yeah, so I suspect Grandma was actually a Presbyterian witch. But, yeah, I don't know. I can't ask her. She she passed away, oh goodness, quite a, quite a while ago. So uh, yeah, there's no going back and asking. Uh, and when I did ask her, um, because of course, as a as I hit my teens, I was very much into uh, Wicca witchcraft, um, tarot reading, um, that whole cult realm um, or alternative realm. I'm not too sure what it would be referred to, but um, yeah, I would ask her. It's like, Grandma, are you? Are you sure? This seems rather, uh, she'd cut me off and be like, I'm Presbyterian. Yeah, that's it. Presbyterian. Yeah, I just, yeah, that's totally Presbyterian. It's not Presbyterian. I don't know where she got it from. So anyways, I'll start. Uh, there are four main things that grandma imparted. Oh, you can't see my hand. Four main things that grandma imparted to me. One was on uh, New Year's Eve you had to clean the house so and it just isn't a regular dusting cleaning sort of thing uh, you had to use a broom and sweep out the old to make way for the new is how she phrased it and so when I was younger um, she would have a broom and she would sweep out the uh, the house um, however as she got older and had mobility issues and that sort of thing she was using a vacuum and um, she would then I thought this was weird at the time after vacuuming she would then go over the area she vacuumed but with a broom like not that the broom bristles would touch the rug but just kind of motioned it over she said it was very important because you have to get out the old dust that might have been missed course later I realized oh wait she meant like energetic sweeping that's what she was doing she was physically sweeping but it was to remove the old energies so yeah Presbyterian totally Presbyterian grandma <laughs> anyways part of that cleaning ritual was you had to empty all of your canisters from the vacuums all your garbage cans and you cannot store that garbage in your home so when you emptied out everything you had to take it out to the curb even if your garbage pickup day wasn't for another week too bad it goes out there it is not allowed to stay in the house and so that's something that to this day I still do I don't know uh, I believe that one is uh, Wiccan I could be wrong let me know Another tradition she had um, also on New Year's Eve was whatever you were doing at the stroke of midnight was going to be representative of what your year would be like. So night you have to make sure you're with your loved ones, you're uh, sober, you're awake, you know, except of course if you're a child. 
Um, but as I got older, it was, what are you doing? What are you doing at stroke of midnight? What happened at the stroke of midnight? Even, you know, six months later, um, you know, if I was having a bad year or just, you know, weird things were happening, she's like, what happened on uh, New Year's Eve? Right. <laughs> so, and I didn't pay much, much attention to this. It was just something that, um, you know, we just kind of did for fun. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. Stroke of midnight, make sure you're doing, um, you know, something important or something loving, um, you know, just don't waste it because it's going to be indicative of what the rest of your year is going to be. And, um, it was no big deal until one year I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to take this a little bit more seriously. And, uh, I was really struggling financially at that time. I had just moved out on my own and, uh, I thought, well, you know what, I don't have much money, but I did have a little jar of coins. And so I would take all my coins and at the stroke of midnight, I make sure I was counting every single cent. So if you picked up on what I just said, I literally spent that year counting every single cent I had and not in a good way. I was penny pinching like crazy. I actually made it worse. So the following year, I got myself some flour and some water and I made a little bit of dough. And I decided that I would be rolling in the dough. So what I did the following year was I made a little dough mixture and I um, put it on the floor and I literally rolled around in it. So I was rolling in dough. And that year actually wound up being fantastic. I got a better paying job, one with benefits. Um, I'm still working for that um, agency today. So it was well worth it. And so ever since then, I, every New Year's, every New Year's Eve strike at the stroke of midnight, when the clock strikes 12, I make sure I'm rolling in the dough. I, I have uh, green Play-Doh that I, uh, I use now. So yeah, that's a weird one. I don't know where that one comes from, but you know, if you tell me, oh, you know, if you're tired, go to bed, like, like, you know, just skip midnight. No, if you sleep through the stroke of midnight, then you're sleeping through your year. So, and if you're, you know, faking it, or you know trying to have a good time but you're not then you're not gonna have a good time for the rest of the year like it, it's for me it's like it's important folks it's important you need to have your stroke of midnight figured out so and don't be kissing random strangers because yeah guess what you're not gonna have any significant or serious attachment for the rest of that year so make sure to plan out your stroke of midnight now if this sounds familiar to any of you again let me know in the comments below the other thing is that on New Year's Day, um, Grandma always insisted that a dark-haired male be the first person to cross the threshold. Now, i got to share with you, Grandma was a bit of a party animal. She had uh, an open-door policy on New Year's Day. Not New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, again, was a, a big deal. But on New Year's Day, any and all were welcome. It was just a constant flow of people coming in and out. However, her door would not open until a dark haired male came to the house. When a dark haired male visitor came, then she would um, open the door and allow that person in. Once the dark haired male Preferably a man, if not a dark haired male child, can cross the threshold. Once that has occurred, then everybody else was allowed in. And this was to the point where she would not open or unlock any doors <laughs> until that occurred. Like literally her best friend would be outside the door and it's no, you ain't coming in until a dark haired man crosses this threshold. So it was pretty intense in one year. Um, she, I guess, had had the door open for a little bit just to air out the house because she was doing a bunch of cooking and preparing for all the guests to come. 
And uh, one of the neighbors, who was an older man who used to have dark hair when he was younger, however, had gone white. And uh, seeing the door was open, he opened it and, you know, popped in just to say, Hey, Helen, did you need anything for, uh, for today? And she lost it, completely freaked out because uh, it was ruined. The year was ruined. He's not dark hair anymore. He took offense to it. Like, well, you know, I'm, I'm quite peppered, but you know, and I'm not, I'm not totally white, but no, it, it has to be a dark haired male. So she was beside herself. We showed up later and she was seriously thinking about just canceling it and how awful it is. And she can't believe that this happened. <laughs> And so the poor guy, I mean, he was just popping in trying to be helpful and according to grandma, yeah, everything is ruined. So that's, um, that's one tradition that I'd like to um, adhere to. However, uh, I don't get a lot of visitors now that I think about it. I tend to go to visit other people, but I don't get a lot of visitors in. So. I don't particularly pay attention to who crosses my threshold, you know, at the start of the new year. So mm, I might have to have to start watching that one. Again, I don't know where that comes from. Grandma's background uh, is English and my grandfather was Scottish. I don't know if that helps anybody, but uh, yeah, those are three traditions. And then the other one, um, Kind of, it's, it's not really a tradition. Ah, it is. Okay, so now that I'm done waffling, um, what it was is uh, grandma, throughout the year, uh, she always had a deck of playing cards. And anytime uh, I talked to her about something or she was thinking things through, she'd pull out this deck of playing cards. And they were just regular playing cards. So turns out what she was doing, and I didn't realize until I got into tarot reading, is she was using the playing cards to do fortune telling. So after I kind of got involved uh, in, in tarot reading, future telling, um, then she, she kind of opened up about it. She didn't um, kind of hide the cards anymore or hide what she was doing anymore because it was a case of we would be talking she would pull out the playing cards and she'd just start doing random things laying things out and then it would turn into solitaire and she would start uh, playing solitaire and uh, yeah like I said when I was younger I I didn't realize what she was doing it wasn't until I was older um, that I figured it out and so once I began to openly uh, practice tarot and uh, all the aunts uh, had no problem with it, they were all rather excited, we started um, doing tarot readings on uh, New Year's Day. And that is important because being the first day of the year, you can do the yearly spread. Now you can do the spread at, at other points in time. It's either recommended the first of, of a month or the final day of, of a month. Um, yeah, some days are more potent than other days. So if you celebrate um, Samhain, uh, Samhain for, for us non-Celtic speakers, it's spelled Samhain. <laughs> so um, you can do it that day or like I said, uh, Gregorian calendar, um, first day or last day of the year. They work too. So, uh, yeah. So we started to do that. She was quite happy about it. And after she passed, I wound up, uh, getting some books that belonged to my, uh, great, great grandmother. And they were on palmistry, crystal ball reading, and on how to use playing cards to tell the future. Now these books, um, I have them here. So let me take a look. There, hold on. Move that there. So this guide is on palmistry. So, and 
think you got that all in there. There we go. Back it up. And this, this one is published, uh, uh, I had to look it up, uh, 1894 was when it was published. So this was one of my great grandmother's or great great grandmother's books. Uh, another book that I have is, uh, now this one I can't find a date. Uh, there's no, um, it just says inside I and M Ottenheimer, printed in USA. So this one is well worn. So here it is. Um, and she got it used, I believe, for 25 cents. So, uh, and by her, I mean um, my either my great grandmother or my great great grandmother. So these have been passed down. Um, I believe this one is prior to 1890. Uh, I'm not too sure. The original price, though, was 10 cents. I don't know if that helps, but there we go. So I have those books. I also have some others. Um, the crystal ball one. Uh, well, sorry, actually, let me pull it up here. Uh, another um, how to use fortune telling by cards. Uh, again, no publication date. Um, this one was 25 cents. So, you know, a little more expensive. So I'm thinking closer to 1900. And uh, this palmistry book she got used, and this one uh, she bought it used for 20 cents. Uh, original price is 10 cents, and this one was published in 1919, because I did find a date in this one. And the crystal gazing, crystal ball reading, crystal gazing is from 1926. So this is the other book. So this one I haven't read yet, um, but yeah, so those are her books. So as much as she wants to say she's a Presbyterian, um, sorry, grandma, it's okay. You can be a Presbyterian witch. So those are my traditions and little quirkiness um, passed down to me from my grandma. And I just want to share them with you. So share with me what your traditions are. Do you know where any of these traditions come from? Um, if you do, please share because I'd like to learn. Like I said, my grandmother's passed, so I can't ask her. And my mom, um, yeah, she doesn't know. <laughs> she doesn't. She just kind of took it as, oh, just you know, your grandmother was quirky. I was like, yeah, I think grandma might have been a witch. I'm not too sure, but. Anyways, as the new year is coming, I hope that you have a wonderful new year's and remember whatever you're doing at the stroke of midnight is indicative of what you will be doing for the rest of the year. So make it count folks. Spend time with your loved ones, kiss those you want to kiss and yeah, just have a great time. All right. Take care. Bye.